Okay, so let's talk about routing signals in Reaper. Um, Reaper is really great when it comes to when it comes to being flexible um, with respect to routing signals. Um, it's really quite um, quite intuitive and uh, powerful. So first of all, why might you want to route a signal from one place to the other? Well, a classic example would be let's say you have two tracks um, and you want to apply a particular effect to both tracks, but you also want uh, the, um, the, the sound, uh, the dry sound, uh, the original sound, and you want to be able to control that uh, all only with one um, particular volume control. So what you could do is you could have, you could create an auxiliary track and instead of adding effects to both tracks individually, you only add the effect to that particular track. So in other words, it becomes an empty track where that only contains the, um, the effect. So in order for it to be applied, the effect is you have to take sound from this particular track or that particular track and send it to that, the effects track. And then uh, in the same manner, you might have an empty track that has no effects where you can take both of these sounds, send it to that one. And now you're able to look at two individual tracks and control the amount of, of uh, uh, you know, if, uh, sound with effects and the amount of sound without effects. I, ho I hope that makes sense. I think once we do it, it'll be it'll be much clearer. So let's say we have these are these are our tracks. I have track number one, track number two. I have two different sound files in it. So that's what it sounds like. I don't know if you can tell. I only have weird sounding samples on my hard drive. Um, I think that says something about me. Anyway, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click here and I'm going to create a, uh, let's say a, um, a reverb, a, a reverb but, uh, track. So I'll go here, I'll go to effects. I'm going to do the reverb just because I like it better. I'm going to go to add, I'm going to go to file and I'm going to choose a different impulse this time. I'll just pick, where were the other ones? Hmm. we go I'll just do a medium one over here okay so now as you can see there's no reverb happening the reason is because there's no sound coming in right here so what I have to do first is I have to route the signal from this out to this particular track so what I'm going to do is the following I'm going to go to the IO settings inputs and output settings and I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this, the master parent send, because what this will do is will it will no matter what send this the original sound to the master fader. Um, so right now we're just going to focus on having two individual faders, one for the effects, one for for the the clean sound, and then we'll send both of those to the master fader. So we'll uncheck that, and then we'll go here, and we'll go, where it says add new send, we're going to go. Uh, oh wait, I forgot to do something very important. First thing I should should have done, and I should have labeled this track. So I'm gonna double click here, and I'm gonna call it Reverb. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create another one. Well, actually, let's let's do this first. So I'll go up to the up, out, and I'll go to Reverb. So I'm gonna add new send Reverb. So what I'm doing now is I'm sending this track to the Reverb. And you can also determine just how much you're sending, and we can automate this, and we'll, we can we'll talk about that later. Um, but basically, what's happening now is this track is not this, there's no sound coming out of this track uh, except for the um, for um, for for the fact that it's going into the reverb track. So at this point, if I mute this or uh, if I mute this track right here. There's still nothing. As you can see, there's sound coming out of here, but because this track is not actually going out to any other track, it's only coming out in this in, in right here. But if I unmute this, and even if I mute this one now, now what's happening is the 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 first take, the first track is going out to the reverb, and so automatically, when you uh, create a send in a track it'll create a receive in the other one. So if you go here, you'll see that it's automatically receiving from the track called Bella One Arms. So, well, maybe I'll do this. I'll, I'll rename these tracks. I'll call this 
track one and I'll call this one track two just to clarify all right so just to recapitulate I have track one I went in and I um, I have two tracks I have track one and track two I have an additional track that I call reverb it's an empty track except for the fact that it has reverb um, attached to it and uh, applied to it then in order to get sound to the reverb I went to track one to the IO settings and I said I unchecked the master parent send and I went to add new send and I and I chose reverb from the the list and automatically that created a receive in the reverb track called track one which makes sense because so the sound is coming from track one into the reverb and so there that's where that is and of course here I'm going to leave, leave this check because I do want the sound from the reverb to go to the master okay so right now I have reverb going uh, applied to track one but not to track two but I could do the same thing here and I can now go uncheck this I'm, I'm on track two I went to the IO settings now the reason this just turned red is because it's not going out anywhere Reaper is just telling us that there's no the sound isn't going anywhere it's just warning us then I'll go here and I'll say reverb and so what I just did now is I just saved a whole bunch of extra extra work because I have a reverb setting that I can then manipulate and I can change all at once so if I have let's say 20 tracks and I want to have the same exact type of reverb on all of those tracks rather than having reverb applied to each individual track and let's say that I kind of mess up the setting or I decide to change the setting of the reverb it's going to be very complicated and, and time consuming to go in for every single track and change that so this way I can now have the all these different sounds going into one single reverb and I can choose and I can change the setting or I can delete it or I can change the impulse and and all of those tracks will be affected by the same so let's see what that sounds like now right you can hear that there's reverb because it's when I stop it it continues on okay now let's also uh, what we're not getting now is a clean sound in other words we're only getting the the original sound um, with the reverb mix applied to it and we could we could also um, change the uh, the balance here between uh, wet and dry together but uh, let's go ahead and do that just for, for for practice we'll create an empty tracks and we'll call that clean And what we're going to do here is uh, we're just going to send the clean sound into it. So in other words, we're not going to apply anything to this. We're just going to say uh, add new send to clean. So now what's happening is my sound from track one is going both equally to reverb one and to clean. And I can I can choose how much sound is going out, by the way. Um, and I can do I want to do the same thing here. Track two, I'm going to add send to clean. And so now I have both sounds coming out of both. And what I can do is I can experiment with how much global reverb do I want for that. And let's say, oh, I want a little bit more of the clean sound. Oh, I want more reverb. Right? And basically what this is controlling is both of these um, basically the overall volume of the, both of these tracks because remember both of these are going into the reverb and both of these are going to the clean so I have these two reverbed these two clean and I can control the individual ones and then of course when I go to my mixer I am now controlling here the overall volume of all of this together both of these in combination so this is why we were we were kind of leaving this alone for the end because this is my overall global volume so this is kind of the final stage. Okay, so that's basically the idea. Um, um, in the next video, I'll do something maybe a little bit more complicated. Maybe I'll add some pitch shifting or something. And uh, just to kind of see how we can manage that. And then I'm also going to talk about automation 
either in the next video or on the following one.